with uh, financial services and then in 2010 is when i started mindscan education খোলা পাই আছে Hello everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello, Oscar. Namaskar. 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 স্যার নমস্কার 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 ভালো আছো স্যার
Hi, Rahul. Rahul, how are you? এতিয়া শুনি পাইছে चक्रवर्ती नाम तो लिखा नमस्कार राहुल कैन यू हियर मी मिस्टर राहुल चक्रवर्ती अच्छा ये तो डिस्कनेक्ट करूं ना कि ना तो डिस्कनेक्ट करूं ना लगे ठीक है ऐसे इट्स गोइंग ऑन गोइंग फाइन सुरजीत ये तो मैं सुरजीत मैं ये तो अपने कंटिन्यू करूं ठीक है ना कि साउंड साउंड डीडू ना कि अभी लाइटें ऑन कर रहे वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस करना है ना वीडियो ऑन कर
Hello everyone, myself Pranav Sarkar, IATO. Hello. Welcome Mr. Sarkar. Hi. Uh, Hi. This is Sanjay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yes, yes. Loud and clear. Sanjay Thakur, Mahati Assam. Yes, sir. Well, good evening. This is Captain Kumar from ATOI. Nice to be here with you. Yeah. First stop, video kick. Stop. Yeah. Good, good, good. Wait a minute. Hey, come on. Sorry, you are not going to. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into it. Sir, I can't hold you. I don't know if you can see it. 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 I Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's three thirty. Good evening, everyone. It's three thirty. I have put uh, everyone on mute for the time being uh, so that there is no disturbance while the speakers are speaking. Mrs. Rupinder Brar from the Ministry of Tourism will be joining at 3.35. So I, uh, I suggest that we start at 3.35. It's four minutes more. Uh, 
in the meanwhile a few housekeeping announcements to begin with i think everyone will be on mute only the speakers will speak uh, subsequently if you want to raise any questions if you have an observation to make you you have to raise your hand there is a system of raising your hand i hope you are aware you basically uh, go to participants there is a participants list there go to part click on participants uh, below your uh, video pane and on the extreme right uh, bot bottom of your screen you find the button to raise your hand so if you raise your hand we'll be able to see that and then one by one we'll be able to take the questions i'm unmuting everyone again and we'll mute mute everyone again later on so what you what time you get to start the meeting this is what time you going to start the meeting 4 minutes more 335 I think Mrs. Rupinder Brar has just joined us. Uh, so now, uh, to begin with, may I request Mr. Ashish Kuthan, Chairman of the Fikri Kisan Speech Council, to uh, make his welcome remarks.
of your screen. Uh, my name is uh, Ashish Fukan. I am the chairman of uh, Fiki Assam State Council. And uh, we have taken this initiative to have this uh, video conference uh, with uh, people in the travel and tourism uh, trade. Uh, you know, as you know, we have been severely hit by the uh, coronavirus and uh, our business uh, has come to a standstill, more or less. Uh, but I'm glad that uh, all of you have taken some time out to uh, discuss uh, what, how we can proceed further uh, in, in coming days. I would particularly like to uh, welcome uh, additional Director General of Ministry of Tourism, uh, Rupinder uh, Brar. Um, I'm glad that uh, you have been able to connect with us. Uh, you know, the, we all in the Northeast uh, are in, you know, extreme East and feel sometime that we are uh, being neglected, but uh, you have come forward to connect with us uh, and we are grateful to you for this uh, gesture. Um, I'm also uh, privileged to have with us today uh, the Director of Tourism, Government of Assam, Mr. Devakova Mishra, and um, I'm not sure whether Mr. Abu Tayang, the Director of Tourism, Arunachal, has joined us, but um, I'm sure he will be in another uh, couple of minutes. Um, both the Assam and Arunachal are one of the leading states of the Northeast and a perspective from uh, government side, both Assam and Arunachal, Arunachal uh, will be helpful for all of us. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Uh, Pranab Sakar, the Ayato president, and I know him well for some years now, and I know that he has a soft corner for the Northeast. And uh, only last week, uh, the Nirmalya Chaudhary, who's heading as chairman IATO Northeast chapter, um, had a video conference with stakeholders in, uh, in the Northeast. And uh, I think the report has already been forwarded to uh, Pranab Sarkar. And I'm definite that uh, Pranav has taken um, note of it and is working on it. Um, my colleague Ranjit Das, who has the subcommittee on tourism, uh, is also the president of TOA. TOA stands for Tour Operators Association of Assam. And he has uh, been active, particularly last two, three weeks, ever since uh, the coronavirus has hit us, and his inputs uh, will also be most welcome. I've um, seen many other known faces, um, including Captain Sudesh Kumar and people from the hotel and the travel industry. Uh, welcome you all. Uh, we will. Um, this uh, meeting will be conducted by Vishwajit, who is the director of Fiki Northeast. Uh, but before he takes over, let me say a few words. Uh, we are going through unprecedented times. Uh, the world has not seen anything of this sort earlier, maybe 100 years back. But uh, during our lifetime, uh, this has hit us, particularly uh, travel and tourism uh, trade. Uh, there is no income, and I see that uh, till at least the end of December, uh, of uh, this year, we are not going to see any much of activity. Um, I expect, um, I'm being optimistic, that uh, by August, July, August, September, things will, um, will settle down. Um, and hopefully, from October onwards, there'll be some trickle, uh, some uh, business uh, will be there, but not the um, uh, kind of uh, normalcy that we uh, had before the uh, virus attack, uh, which uh, I feel personally, I, I may be wrong, uh, will be only start from October 21. However, the good um, news is that some of our tour operators uh, are maintaining uh, uh, or postpone 
to uh, next year. Uh, they have not canceled, uh, which is a good sign, but there are also some uh, tour operators who have canceled it completely and asking for refunds, etc. Um, as you all know, uh, the government of India has uh, uh, given us some relief moratorium uh, for three months, etc., etc. You, I need not repeat all this, <clears throat> but uh, the tourism um, uh, sector itself uh, will not be able to hold. Uh, till three months. I think the moratorium for tourism should continue at least till end of December, if not till 21st uh, March 2021. Uh, also, in the meantime, ever since the relief was announced, we have checked with our banks. Banks are still not uh, willing to give us a working capital. Uh, as there has not been any uh, in, uh, clarification from the Ministry of Finance. I think uh, we should look into this uh, because we need working capital to work uh, at least to last for six, seven months uh, in coming, in coming months. Uh, as far as the future is concerned, as I mentioned, uh, I think we will see some kind of activity from November onwards. Um, but a uh, very, uh, very slow process will start. I don't think international tourists uh, uh, will be able to come or we are, you know, uncertain times. Nobody knows the future, but uh, hopefully things will settle down and we need to work uh, uh, in coming days together. Uh, I would only uh, uh, request the Ministry of uh, Tourism to take it up with the petroleum ministry to reduce the aviation fuel price. As, uh, as you know, the uh, worldwide, the uh, oil prices have come down and a lower uh, you know, aviation fuel price will reduce the, um, the cost of travel um, if it's passed on to the uh, customers. And we will be able to bring people from uh, you know, Bombay, Delhi, Hyderabad, and so on for in domestic tourists at a much lower price uh, to the Northeast. Uh, this, I'm sure the government can um, uh, do it if they so apply. Also, the LTA, which was there earlier, a few years back, uh, should be opened up again uh, so that there is a uh, tourist, uh, domestic tourist start, uh, start coming, you know, start uh, coming to the Northeast. And here I, it reminds me of the what Prime Minister said uh, that you know you have to visit uh, 15 destinations in the in the next couple of years. I think we have to depend on domestic tourist uh, traffic uh, in in coming years. How we are going to go about it, uh, we will uh, come to some kind of uh, conclusion at the end of uh, today's meeting. Uh, I will now request uh, Bishuji to take over and um, conduct this meeting and hopefully by the end of it uh, we will uh, have uh, a, some kind of a picture uh, how to take uh, forward how to go forward in coming months thank you uh, everyone and uh, let us uh, begin and uh, you know we are in this all together and we have to overcome uh, this uh, pandemic somehow or the other to survive Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shukan, for your welcome remarks and for the cautiously optimistic note that you have stuck. We are privileged to have with us Mr. Devakumar Mishra, who is the Director of Tourism uh, in Assam. The man really in the hot seat today. A lot of expectations, sir, uh, a lot for support from your end. May I request Mr. Devakumar Mishra to make his initial remarks? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chakravarti. Uh, it's a very good initiative by Fiki uh, to have a webinar. Actually, uh, for the last few days, we have been keeping social distancing for all, and uh, that's what uh, we could not meet each other or the stakeholders of tourism for a long time since the lockdown has been started. So, and today only because of this platform, now we'll be able to share our views. Uh, getting back to business in tourism, say post-COVID-19, uh, before going to that, 
It's just I am going to have a small glimpse of the scenario of Assam that not only in Assam, in Northeast or in the whole country, we have a grave situation. Particularly uh, in Assam and the Northeast, we have the uh, tourist season in seasonal basis, like uh, from October only, October to April mostly, and maybe sometime in May. But this time, before COVID, we had the Citizenship Amendment Bill uh, and Citizenship Amendment Act later on, uh, which had affected a lot. The tourism industry has been affected by that, the cab. And next, just after the cab, then we have the, now we have the COVID-19. And particularly, cab was a domestic issue or the regional somehow, somehow. But COVID is an international issue. So ultimately, it affected the whole international tourist as well as, well as domestic tourist as a whole. Particularly, I can say a few things. We had a very tough time of deporting tourists, particularly interna international tourists. And like uh, before seven, eight days, maybe eight, 10 days last, I mean, a bunch of tourists, international tourists, maybe six international tourists, they left somehow in the last flight arranged up to Frankfurt. So we had a tough time of arranging their departure, uh, facilitating their departure from Majuli. So the tourists in included uh, like from Germany, maybe uh, from France and many other, other countries. And now more or less, we don't have uh, tourists, international tourists in Assam. Maybe there might be some sporadic, I mean, a small, uh, I mean, maybe little uh, amount of Tourists are there somehow, but not as a tourist, maybe some guests somewhere because we have been reported that there are guests of some, I mean, our people, maybe they have been staying because of the uh, communication bottlenecks right now. Now, if we go, I mean, to the scenario, total effect affected people, maybe it's around two lakhs, two lakhs to three lakhs people directly or indirectly associated with tourism that has been affected. And secondly, entrepreneurship affected in this sector, they have to bear a huge, I mean, fixed and recurring expenses. However, all businesses coming to complete standstill in next few months, mm -hmm. as Asis Kukantar has already told, uh, because of uh, all this COVID-like situation, maybe now or after some time, for all stakeholders. The measures, uh, uh, as because we have been discussing uh, and we'll discuss Tredvia for the measures which can be adopted uh, during this period or after the COVID is over. So uh, the priority to start the working, maybe the recovery for the recovery measures by the tourism fraternity and the government is the most, I mean, need of the R. Maybe economic incentive packages that can, can be adopted regarding boosting of tourism sector post COVID-19, which has already been taken up from the tourism department government of Assam. And uh, tourism department has already communicated us just at the outbreak of COVID about the plan, uh, Oh, I mean, after or during COVID plan, which we have already communicated, communicated, giving some measures, some op I mean, opinions from our side, which government might take later on. It includes, just we have proposed, it includes that uh, personal income tax relief to a certain extent, to a certain limit, uh, related, relating to domestic tourism, if that can be, I mean, relieved to some extent, then tourist, uh, I mean, tourism can be boosted up and maybe the free visas for tourists in visiting Assam and the Northeast particularly in this area. And already uh, Asis Fukan has said that we have to develop or we have to promote now the domestic tourism vigorously, which is the need of the hour because international tourism to grow the international tourism again, it will take some time, maybe, uh, I mean, some time even after COVID because of this pandemic for the whole, I mean, country for the whole, I mean, globe. So, but domestic tourists, yes, we can promote. Uh, secondly, I mean, deduction of maybe double tax because we have to pay two times tax for inbound tour operators in attending events for promotion of tourist destinations of the state. So that can be, maybe some relief can be given. GST free tax holidays 
for the stakeholders in tourism sector in Assam for two years in order to recover for the losses, keeping in mind the tourism industry mm -hmm. in Assam and Northeast, as because tourism in Assam and Northeast is seasonal. And um, I have also proposed that short term interest free or low interest loans for rejuvenation of this business, particularly. And in addition, uh, the stakeholders, which includes the hoteliers, resort owners, tourism product owners, organized and individual tourism entrepreneurs, they have to come up with a strategy how to promote tourism. Like, for example, tour operators can uh, perhaps offer good deals, like 30 to 35 percent discount, or maybe the free services, whichever is conducive to attract tourists. Other service providers such as aviation and hoteliers should cooperate with the tour operators. There has to be a cooperation between them to restore the sector. Similarly, the stakeholders could also adopt one buy one get one sort of thing that can that that sort of programs aiming to woo travelers as well as encourage them to experience other services. The endeavor taken by the Department of Tourism and the stakeholders to build one to one relationship with the hoteliers and tour operators and other states. During the roadshow, because we conducted seven vigorous roadshows, maybe in seven high, yes, in seven cities, big cities in India, to woo the domestic tourists, particularly. So that should not go in vain because of COVID or any, any like situations. The tour operators can capture photos, upbeat messages on social media and their counterpart in tour operators in other, I mean, states about the local destinations, which are free from all sorts of things and must be added to the travel bucket list. When forest tourists faced hostility in many parts of the country, avid COVID-19 outbreaks, there is just, just I can I mean share one thing one experience of a Spain Spanish tourist, a tourist from Spain who had undertaken a wall I mean cycle tour was stranded in Sipsagar. And he is he was residing with a local, even he is residing with a local in that town of Sipsagar. And he ultimately he found that it is safer to him to stay here rather than going back to his country or to any other place. The total stranger, it is a unique experience that he has shared in the house, he's residing that can be shared in the social media to woo the tourist to explore experiment, experiential tourism destinations and aid to the bucket list. Promotion of domestic tourism rather is in the call of the hour of the uh, country today, which I have already reiterated, that it can help the national integration even the educational tour, maybe the excursions, when school reopens, to be, to, can be promoted to the new undiscovered or undisclosed locations, which Northeast has many to offer. If COVID-19, this pandemic, if it is over, say by May, uh, we hope mm -hmm. uh, that in June even, we have the famous Ombubasi Mela in, Kamaikha Temple. So after this, maybe in June, mid June or the last part of June, maybe it's uh, I mean say after 20th. If everything goes fine at that time, then Ombubasi Mela even that can be promoted, which has already I mean been promoted in a large manner for the last couple of years. And devotees, not only the religious pilgrims, but the other devotees or tourists, they have already started coming to Kamaikha Temple for the Ombubasi Mela. So even if situation goes Okay, all right, then we can start even from Ambubasi Mela. We can promote Ambubasi Mela if situation goes normal. Uh, that can also yield positive results. Mm -hmm. Stakeholders can possibly promote other destinations to stabilize the tourism industry. Uh, uh, we uh, actually, my opinion, in my opinion, that uh, since last, I mean, 10 years, from 2010 to 2019, uh, 2020 even, so we had a very decent, I mean, increase of domestic and uh, international tourist inflow in Assam. 
particularly in Assam. I am saying in Assam and also to the Northeast, which we cannot let it go in vain. So we'll have to try hard and we'll have to, I mean, form a common platform with the stakeholders, with the hoteliers, tour operators, all stakeholders, and the government office bearers, particularly in tourism industry, so that we can set a common goal for promotion of the tourism in Assam as well as in Northeast. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mishra, for your wonderful opening remarks uh, for uh, the suggestions that you have made regarding uh, short term loans for, uh, for the other suggestions as to how the industry can come back to its own going forward. Uh, the pandemic that we see today is one of its kind that we have never seen in our lifetime. Maybe the previous pandemic, which happened 100 years back, even that did not have this kind of impact. I'm not very sure if after this the world will be the same. There will be many things which will change. There will be many changes in consumer behavior. There will be many changes in what the tourists expect. And I, I, I feel it will be innovations that will rule the rules. Uh, the ones who are innovate faster and do the right kind of innovations will probably do better. Uh, now we, we were supposed to be joined by Mr. Abu Tayang, uh, the Director of Tourism of Arunachal Pradesh. But unfortunately, he is not being able to join us. He's just sent me a message. Mm -hmm. He's also the Director of Disaster Management in Arunachal Pradesh. And there is some issue which has come up, so he's not being able to join us. But may I request Mr. Ranjit Das? Uh, he is Chairman mm -hmm. of the of FIKI's uh, Subcommittee on Tourism in Assam uh, to make his remarks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Ranjit. And good afternoon, everyone. Actually, from the tour operator's perspective, the pandemic outbreak and resulting in the lockdown has presented a fresh challenge to us, actually. Because uh, we have been facing such disruptive uh, impacts since December, as Ashish Kukan has also said, our director of tourism has said before. So we had some multiple impacts which were adverse in nature. And finally, the COVID-19, which has the potential of derailing us completely. This is because, more so because tourism here is in Assam or in the Northeast is a small units. They are of near MSME size or even smaller. They are all first generation entrepreneurs with very low capital base. So that can completely go haywire. These units may not have large cash reserves set aside for such emergency corpus. And we have a long off season staring in front of us. So overcoming all these obstacles in the next few months will be real difficult for tour operators of the region. So our sustenance is at stake so we need recovery packages from the government to help us to move on. Memorandums have been submitted by the national bodies of associations as well as by the state bodies in the, in the center of the state. So the bailout is very important. So we just have to wait now for the government announcements, which we hope will come in the near future. But one good thing is that UNWTO has also recognized this pandemic, the recession following as a fallout that will hit the tourism sector very badly because tourism sector being labor intensive in nature. So they have come out with some recommendations and these recommendations have been made by some high level representatives across the tourism sector and from within the uh, greater UN system. So I'm sure as recommended by the UNWTO that tourism should be placed at the center of all government recovery policies and action plans. I'm sure our Minister of Tourism will also have a look at these recommendations and maybe take it forward. So from uh, two approaches point of view again, we don't know the exact timeline of recovery. It's very unclear. But we can take some lessons from China, 
where it all started actually and which can offer a glimpse into the future where the pandemic is more or less under control there and restrictions are lifted and early signs of recovery is also already happening there hotels have already increased occupancy to about 40% in the first week of march and they expect that the domestic tourism will increase by about 70% in the next 6 months we do have a large population here in uh, in india a large domestic population that tourism so i think we can also uh, expect a pent up desire to travel amongst the tourist domestic tourism so i think uh, we will work we have to work in that line but to uh, my tour operator friends i would like to also advise or i would like to also say that there will be certain behavioral shifts once we are in the new connected world actually people may not like to travel in large groups maybe we can expect individual travelers fits or small family groups so we have to work on that line they'll be more interested in going for local or regional exploration rather than going abroad then they will be price sensitive and will look for better value for money so these are the aspects that we'll have to work when we are in the lockdown maybe we can work on that we can uh, we i urge my friends from the travel fraternity that amid the lockdown we can uh, make the digital world or the social media the best practice for our business we can go for live streaming or this just to keep it alive we can uh, we can inspire entertain and educate to bring the hope of travel back to the lives of the people so these are the things that i would expect the tour operators will be doing during this time so that the travel uh, is still alive amongst the people maybe it's something in the line of uh, discover assam or discover northeast from your home or uh, plan now travel it or something on on that line so these i think uh, we'll have to work really hard now so that we we have a pent up uh, demand in the uh, when things are become better because bringing customers confidence and the tra- changing their travel sentiment will be very important for us at this stage so we'll have to work on that line so uh, with that i think i have that much to say thank you very much thank you thank you mr das for your remarks i think uh, you have struck uh, the right chord by when you say that this is the time to prepare this is the time time to start innovating but without further ado i think uh, uh, we have the director uh, additional director general of tourism of tourism uh, mr spinder brar with us uh, may i request her to make her initial remarks and then after that we can uh, interact we can have a few questions and answer some observations madam thank you thank you vishwa ji um, at the outset um, let me first wish a good friday to everyone and there are still uh, reasons to feel happy about and it's um, a day therefore to wish each other and thank you ashish for setting the tone deva you had some really interesting uh, inputs as to what north east should do so i was listening very keenly to all that you said and um, i think we all agree that it is indeed a very grim period it is a tough period it is also a period which is unprecedented in uh, the lives of all of us whether at the national level or whether we look at the international level the the challenge that is before humanity right now to begin with to just sheer save lives and to not allow the pandemic to cause a further havoc that is the first concerns of um, all the governments the people of all countries and i think therefore rightfully so in our country also the most immediate and urgent concern has been that what would be the best measures that the pandemic does not uh, spread coming specifically to therefore the impacts on tourism well yes i mean naturally any even a small incident that happens in any region or area is usually enough to create uh, barriers in tourism because tourism is after all an elective activity it is something you do for fun you do it for enjoyment you do for relaxation so naturally when there is a pandemic of the kind that corona is 
the impact on tourism is going to be immense. It is already because of lockdowns, there is no movement, the sentiment of moving out of one's own vicinity of safety is uh, definitely going to be vulnerable and challenged for quite some time. And therefore, in all forums, and I think Vicky had the national um, seminar on the 6th, and the narrative coming out, therefore, in all forums, and I think that's something we are all agreeing on, that in the times to come, the roadmap for all of us is to develop and work more and more on domestic tourism. Now, while in some ways, therefore, I would say that the times are challenging, but then it is also, therefore, a time of creating opportunities. It is also a time of introspecting and thinking. I would say, fortunately for us, we are a remarkable country. We are indeed incredible India. We are a country blessed with mountains, deserts, rivers, mangrove swamps, and, and you name it. I mean, the game parks, the tiger, the lion, the rhinoceros. There's nothing that we don't have. And then if we get into heritage and culture, the, the monuments, the forts, the amazing architecture of temples in south of India, the beaches that we have. I think there is so much which is uh, unexplored in India. And to your specific region, the Northeast, I think it's a, it's a, it's a dream place. And it is a place which is uh, waiting to be explored. So I think in some ways we can look at this as an opportunity for all of us to, to look at how to promote the parts of India. I'm sure there are n number of Indians who are not familiar with the beauty of one's own country. So I think therefore it gives a great opportunity to all of us who are associated with the world of tourism and hospitality to create platforms of information, to create products and packages which make it interesting. And yes, I was hearing some suggestions that uh, Deva you were making as to how uh, in earlier times, there used to be LTCs and LTAs and maybe some other kind of um, packages we can think of with industry on how to work in promoting, in your case, promoting Northeast and uh, showcasing it to the rest of India. And because not only is there going to be change, perhaps we are hoping that uh, pandemic settles down. But even once it settles down, the countries are going to be looking at changing maybe medical norms. Maybe there's going to be change in visa regulations. We are not so sure what kind of entry and exit the other countries are going to have, especially till a vaccine regime doesn't come. But that's again where the opportunity for us lies, that the moment the, uh, the pandemic is behind us in India, then all those Indians who were traveling out of India, I think we need to craft out and create and present to all those Indians that India itself is a great alternative to traveling. It's safer, it's home, you don't have to go away. So I think that's where it is, a, I would say, a challenge for all of us, in fact, to, to package it and present it in a manner that makes it so interesting. Because I have yet to come across anyone who actually, when they travel to any region, in India, come back and are not happy about the marvels of India. And particularly to the Northeast, I think the variety that you have and the music, the food, the sheer culture, the openness. And in the current scenario, when we are going to be looking at, I think, detoxing from technology, then the open skies, the trekking trails, I think Tal uh, Swadesh I think he's there perhaps as part of today's conference. I think there's a lot of role that adventure tour operators have to do in the, your region and we'll be very happy to work with them. I think the DG attended uh, a seminar also with them recently and there has been talk on how we can uh, look at sanitizing and improving the ecosystem of the lodges and trek trails etc. I think that's the way forward and we should be you know looking at doing that. From uh, Ministry, we are also launching the campaign of the Ekhopna Desh. We of course had, uh, the Minister had launched it when we went to Orissa to Konar uh, on 25th or the 26th of January. It's a campaign on my golf and we are carrying it forward by using technology, just like we are doing a webinar right now, 
from the 14th we are creating a destination based series through webinars and we hope that uh, people will watch those seminars and have a virtual kind of an understanding of what it could be so the first one is about eight cities of delhi for example so there are these people from heritage walk who are going to talk about the heritage of delhi and we're going to try and make it interesting so i would highly recommend all of you also to to join us in that program and use that platform because we will be scaling it up on our social media we shall be promoting it at various forums to to get people actually to listen to those webinars and that's a great marketing tool so join us on that it doesn't cost anything and we'd be very happy if you can come on board and do these um, 40 45 minute of presentations of your destinations and make it interesting make it like a place which people would look at it and say okay the moment uh, travel opens up i really want to travel for this and we want to keep this platform very very uh, driven by all of you we really don't want to put any content from ourselves because it it has to be content which sells and so i want all of you to join us in that and i'm sure we can uh, in this period while you know everybody needs to stay home and everybody needs to respect the lockdown but once we emerge out of it then people should already have so many options out of which they can then take and travel to the beautiful part of country that you are all in coming for a very uh, i will touch only upon the points that you have raised about what the government might need to do for you know increasing the moratorium period or the working capital and things like that somebody i think also put a question on uh, what can be done for the people on the margins can there be any other methods of doing that i think it's that's really for ministry of finance to do in the ministry of tourism we have represented the interests of the industry before the ministry of finance it has after the first round of intervention came from ministry of finance and from the rbi we have once again also sent these submissions mentioning what we got and what we still need to you know promote and support our industry on so let's wait let's wait for what the finance ministry comes uh, back with we are hoping today morning also there was a dialogue with uh, the ministry of commerce and the dgft and uh, the services export council and a uh, lot of issues got discussed over there for the claims that are pending for some of the operators and hoteliers and uh, we are hoping that solutions come out of that but ultimately all those things in which we have another ministry to do for us we can at best you know take it up but things that we can do within our ministry we'd be very happy if any of you wants to give any direct uh, suggestions on how we could uh, help you to promote your region better or any other thing that you can think of please use this period to create that kind of an ideation atmosphere and we'd be very happy to get in ideas however the idea may appear vague for now it might be a very workable idea so i would highly encourage all of you to get in touch with us you can get in touch with the regional director in your region you can be in touch with either dev barman or sagnik in calcutta you can be in touch with me you can be in touch with anybody else that you can connect with in the ministry or even through fiki itself to give us ideas out of the box on how you think that we should be allocating the resources from the ministry for the betterment of the industry of tourism and hospitality so those are you know some of my observations and comments and i would like to also assure all of you that we are there with you in this uh, situation of uh, grave uh, you know concern but i also wish all of you to remain healthy to respect the lockdowns the way they are and also try and create community chains of helping people around you because it are, you know the good thing about i would say social media these days is that everything that we do in society these days carries all over to the world and that's why whatever india is doing right now is actually being appreciated around the world if we as a country can defeat covid with least damage to our people that itself will be one of the most positive messages to domestic tourists and also to the rest of the world 
that India is a safe destination. And that's why going step by step, I think our first concern should be to remain as safe and as unaffected from COVID as possible. And then going forward to promote domestic tourism, because if our own people will travel more and more, then it will be creating confidence in people who are watching us that okay, if the country is safe for me to travel, then it is safe for somebody else to travel too. And that's the third stage when we then look at the inbound tourists who will be coming to India. So with some of those thoughts and observations, I would uh, like to say thank you once again to Fiki and thank you to all of you to set this up. I think these dialogues are extremely important and we are learning a lot from all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you for your remarks. Uh, I think that's very encouraging. And I'm sure people in the trade, people in the tourism industry in the Northeast will take uh, your advice and a lot of ideation will come up with a lot of ideas. We are also, at FIKI, we are also working on uh, some suggestions, papers, some recommendations, and we'll be working with the industry, collate all the, the feedback, and we'll be in touch with you, madam. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we also have with us uh, Mr. Pranav Sarkar. He is president of IATO. He was, I had the privilege of listening to him a few days back, back like Pranav, uh, pick, pick his national seminar, national webinar. Uh, he has some wonderful ideas about what we can do forward. May I invite Mr. Pranav Sarkar to make his Hello. Yes, Mr. you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me at this uh, forum to be part with you, with the Northeast uh, uh, members and the our people from the Northeast region. And I am very happy to be part of it, as uh, rightly uh, you know mentioned by ADG Ma'am that today is Good Friday. And it, it used to be our season before the off season starts. Easter and Good, Good Friday, these are the season from Europe. And we used to be very, very busy. And this is the year we are sitting at home. So this is where is the difference of this Good Friday and our previous, all the Good Fridays we celebrated all along our life. So with this uh, little change of uh, our tone, I would like to say that IATO being the president of IATO, IATO uh, takes everybody together and uh, we work on all India basis and our membership is uh, Pan India and uh, Northeast is one of our prime area that we always look forward to promote because for the last 10 years, Northeast is working very, very hard to promote themselves and when the season starts, when the situation improves mm -hmm. and this uh, very untoward incident of uh, COVID-19 has started, this is very unfortunate. Millions of jobs at stake. Our responsibility has increased. Though we will not give up, we are the fighters. As tour operators, we fight every day for our living, for our jobs and we provide jobs to millions of people who work in this uh, industry. And tourism is, as you everybody knows, that it is an economic activity. And therefore, our Prime Minister also said that you must travel 15 destinations in two years' time. So this is where is the uh, high priority on tourism, that tourism is very important for our country, that people should travel. And COVID-19 may affect the international tourism, but I believe that once the borders are open and the vaccination is invented, there will be many more tourists to come to India with proper uh, packages they will buy. But there may be some changes in traveling pattern because senior people may take a little longer time to decide, but others will travel immediately. However, we should not feel bad about it because we have a very huge uh, number of domestic tourism and domestic is going to travel within India because our source market countries or where the outbound is also going, those countries is also not going to be ready by then to invite all the foreign tourists coming to their country 
and we also will have to be play safe for our own self that we cannot visit those countries unless they are declared uh, by uh, world world health organization that they are safe to travel similarly our country has to also come up in a good way that we are need to be a safe and hygienic country because less covid 19 a disaster will give us upper edge in front of all other countries and we are sure that with that our recovery time will be less if you go back to all your disasters whether it was 911 whether it was plague or bundle commission or earthquake if you look at we bounce back very very fast within few months but this is the time we see that first of all it started in the beginning of our off season first six month is gone and then it will take another three months to revive so means nine months is in a very hand to mouth situation for our survivor and we presume that with domestic movement we shall be able to manage somehow but in the meantime some relief in the form of uh, government help may give us some uh, encouragement to survive for some time and it is very much needed therefore with the suggestions we received all india basis we have already forwarded along with ministry of tourism government of india and also finance ministry that and also commerce ministry all along we are working together rupinder ji is always with us dg madam is also with us secretary sir is also with us everybody is helping us and your first point of moratorium to be increased from 10 to 12 months is on the high agenda that government should look into the moratorium part and the interest part need to be looked into at a very very lower rate we have also requested for long term loan for 10 years and after one year payment should start and that also interest free and collateral free.